This new attack bypasses Wi-Fi encryption, the popular app 3CX is backdoored, and AI's risks and rewards. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for April 4th, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week. Cybersecurity researchers have discovered a new vulnerability in the Wi-Fi IEEE 802.11 protocol that abuses a functionality called sleep mode. Now, this can break the Wi-Fi encryption and disrupt connections on WPA2 and 3 networks. The full technical details will be presented at Black Hat Asia next month, but here is a summary of their findings. This Wi-Fi standard has a power saving function that cues or buffers Wi-Fi frames whenever a device goes into sleep mode. Network frames are little bits of code that include a header, a data payload, and an ending with data such as a client's MAC address and the receiving device's MAC address. Now, if a client device goes into sleep mode, it will send one of those frames over to the access point, telling it that the client is sleeping and that it should queue up the remaining frames till the client wakes up, at which time the buffered frames are encrypted and transmitted like normal. But while they are in that sleep state, an attacker could potentially spoof a legitimate MAC address, send that command to queue data frames, then force them to wake up and retrieve the entire stack of frames. An attacker could also send authentication frames to the access point that are usually used to encrypt frames between devices on the same network, thus allowing them to retrieve frames in plain text. Now, the protocol does not require queued frame stacks to get purged or removed after a set amount of time or after something changes in terms of security so the frames can be leaked. This does require a specialized tool the researchers created and dubbed Mac Stealer, of which the code has been shared on GitHub by the creators as well. Products by ASUS, Cisco, D-Link, Host APD, Aruba, and Lancom are affected. Cisco did respond, saying the attack is opportunistic and information gained would be of minimal value in a securely configured network. Now, while no real-world attacks have used this vulnerability, yet. Cisco recommends using TLS to encrypt data and use an enforcement policy along with restricting network access. The video and voice calling desktop client 3CX is the target of a massive supply chain attack brought on by attackers working for the North Korean government. 3CX is used by major companies and organizations, counting over 600,000 customers like Amex, Mercedes-Benz, and more. The attackers distributed a trojanized version of the app, which was digitally signed by 3CX, as well as OS manufacturers like Apple. The attack is believed to stem from North Korea because an encryption key and the infrastructure used in this attack match a campaign that happened on March 7th by a group called Labyrinth Kolema, who happened to be a state-sponsored threat actor group working with North Korea. Now, according to reports, the attackers planned and set up domains way back in February of 2022, so this was very much planned. Oddities were reported by Sentinel-1 in March, and 3CX users posted about strange false positives detected in their apps by endpoint security software like Sentinel-1. Now, even though users were reporting these detections for a good week, 3CX did not take any immediate actions to determine why their app was getting flagged by security software, and it turns out it was not a false positive. 3CX did discover the issue in several versions of their Electron Windows and Mac apps in which malicious payloads were bundled in the Git libraries that they used. The payloads were added via DLL sideloading, encrypted, and hidden inside legitimate application downloads. Now, in some cases, a second stage payload called Gopuram malware was administered if the victim is a cryptocurrency company. 3CX recommends users check their networks for compromise, and security firm CrowdStrike recommends users stop using 3CX for the time being. Indicators of compromise have been posted by Sophos. 
biggest of shout outs to my Patreon supporters, especially my golden s'mores for their fur babies and for making the show possible since we do not have ads on the show at all. And a huge thank you to Martin, Stephen, Ashley, Ben, Nick, Franklin, and Jennifer for being a part of the s'mores at patreon.com slash Shannon Morse. That is my new Patreon page for the show where I will be posting all of the perks for patrons, including early access to this very video. If you are currently a patron, on the Threatwire Patreon page, switch over to the new page so you don't lose access to your perks. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Shannon Morse, spelled exactly like my name is spelled for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials. I am about to hit 100,000 subscribers, which is so crazy and humbling to me. So if you wanna see more of my security content, please do check out my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well if you are just now finding our channel. <laughs> Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story all about AI. So AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and humanity, as shown by extensive research and acknowledged by top AI labs. That's actually a quote in the opening statement in an open letter signed by over a thousand AI developers, professors, and tech figureheads and founders. The letter calls for a six month pause on AI development and training for anything more powerful than GPT-4. The reason for this call comes from the Future of Life organization, which believes risks that reside in AI have not been carefully considered, such as job automation, systems that outsmart humans, make humans obsolete, or could control civilization as a whole. Much of this is due to AI uses that we are already seeing raising ethical questions. The open letter states that training on advanced AI should include strict oversight and management, pauses should be verifiable, and if AI training cannot be paused, governments should step in. The letter continues by targeting policymakers, asking them to create regulations around watermarking, to differentiate between fake and authentic material, assigning liability, and creating audits by independent experts. Future of Life optimistically adds that humanity can flourish with AI and we can reap the rewards and benefits of AI, but society should be given a chance to adapt. Society is currently experiencing a race to the top, so to speak, with many AI creators competing for the number one spot. The open letter brings up some reasoned concerns. As a content creator myself, the need to adapt and use AI to further my career is definitely definitely at the forefront of my mind this year, and I also see the potential to use some of these tools to prevent burnout or overwork. But at one point, does that convenience create obsolescence? It's a very heated subject, so if you comment on it, please do so respectfully, and I'll see you down there in the comments myself. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.